Hi, fellow traders. Well, it is two for Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, or Super Tuesday, uh, one of those Tuesdays. But the reality is, this Tuesday was a carbon copy of Monday. Uh, trading wise, it, it it's more of a copy than you would believe. And we'll talk about that here in a minute, get into the trades. But you know, this week, I want to share with you a lot of, well, as many of the quotes that or sayings that Kobe Bryant had that I use and that I have in my notes. So I have on a sticky note on my, my uh, monitors or somewhere on my desk. And because I, a lot of these, the ones that I share with you, especially the one yesterday, they're really close to my heart. And I've used them. And this one, this particular one, I've actually made people mad using. Um, and it goes, I have nothing in common with lazy people who blame others for their lack of success. Great things come from hard work and perseverance. No excuses. And if you've been around me for a while, uh, especially in the last couple of weeks, you know this is how I think. You know, I, I believe that you have to look at yourself. You have to put in that hard work. You have to persevere through all of these problems and all of the things that you're going to be dealing with. And you can't just have excuse after excuse after excuse. Any roadblock you have, there shouldn't be an excuse as to why you can't deal with it. All right? So we have to just look in the mirror and decide, hey, I'm not going to let this beat me. No, I, I can make it happen. And go for it. And so everybody that I talk to or uh, that when I start talking to them, especially in a mentor session and they're coming up with all these excuses, you know, the first thing we need to do is work through that. We need to deal with that. We need to figure out, okay, these are the roadblocks. What can we do to get these out of the way? And you're going to have to put in the work, you know, because if you're not going to do it, you can't blame me. You can't blame your broker. You can't blame your platform. You can't blame anybody if you're not willing to put in the work. And, you know, anybody who knew Kobe, who Kobe and his mindset from day one, that's what it was about. You know, and I didn't even know this until several years ago. I was watching the Allen Iverson documentary. And he told a story about how I think they went to play the Lakers or something and he was in the gym and and Kobe was in the gym and neither one of them were going to leave because neither one of them wanted the other to outwork them. And that was a mindset that he had. And I had to adopt that. You know, in my mind, I couldn't let anybody outwork me because that was the only way I could stay on top of my game and my game is not running a chat room or marketing or anything my game is trading and that's what I'm trying to stay on top of so you know and we've seen this in the last couple of weeks I mean before it was all sure trader sure trader this sure trader that I can't make any money because sure trader is this the Commissions are too much and whatever it was one thing after the other and everybody that actually sat down with me and listened to me And let me help them work through these things They realized hey, I was the one that was the roadblock. It was my mindset So all of these roadblocks I could either deal with them or I can quit and move on and do something else You have that choice you know, so you choose to work with who you work with. And if it's not working for you, you can't sit there and blame them. You need to pick up and move or either make it work for you. One of the two.
And we know what's been going on with TD Ameritrade. Everybody's talking about it. You know, all it takes is a couple people to come up with some things and then everybody piles on. And that's that's kind of how things happen. And, you know, I've been saying for six years, six plus years, TD Ameritrade is not a platform that you want to trade momentum strategies on. It's not. It's not made for that. It's made for the the trend type trades. If you're going to day trade, they're expecting you to trade trends, slower moving trends. That's what this thing was designed for. It was designed for um, swing trading and investing. If you take a step back and look at it and look how it's put together, you'll see that. But you've been getting away with trading momentum for years. Now that they've gone to this free commissions, you got people who just have lost their minds and will, and instead of managing and monitoring how many trades they take, going from 695 a trade to zero, then they're just going to trade. And yeah, overwhelm the system. And that's something that they're going to have to deal with. But we can't sit back and blame them if we're not making any money. If it's a problem and we can't do and it can't function the way we need it to, what do we need to do? Move on. Find somebody else that can. You know, but I've tried for the last two days to duplicate um, some of the problems that you guys have been having. Um, and I just haven't, I just can't do it. It won't, everything works for me. Then I'm having no problems whatsoever. You can look at XLRN. I traded it today. And all I'm doing is trying to do whatever I can to duplicate the issues that you guys are having. You know, I got in twice. I took 300 shares here. And then, you no, know, I was supposed to take 200, but that was my mistake. I didn't change the... I didn't click the um, up button one extra time, but that's fine. Both of these orders went through. The only issue that you may have pre-market is if you don't change it to extended. The, the order has to be for extended hours. If you try to do a regular market order or regular limit order, it will not fill. So... You know, I did the right order. Everything filled immediately, no delay. But again, this was pre-market, so I didn't have any problems. And I had a limit order here to take profit at 76. It did it, did not, it did not miss it. Didn't miss a beat. Um, here was a market order. And then here was a stop limit order. So I tried all these different orders, no problems. And here I took a snip of, hold on, let's see if I can get it. And I canceled orders and I added orders. I did everything. Um, you can see all of these cancel orders. Um, here was a stop limit that I had that I, that I canceled. Um, here was the stop limit, the last one that uh, filled 77.25. It everything filled, no problems. It immediate, immediate fills. So I'm not sure. I'm, I'm gonna continue doing it this week to see if I run into any of these problems. But the only time. I have ever run into trying to um, enter a trade is within the first five minutes. And we all know what's happening then. I even have trouble in DOS sometimes trying to get in in the first five minutes if I'm trying to get in. And the only, the only trades I'm trying to get in in the first five minutes are swing trades or if I'm going to do an all-day hold, I'm just going to set it and forget it. 
those are the only ones because the price is moving so fast. Um, it's jumping around. So you almost have to do a market order. And when I do a market order, it fails immediately. But trying to do a limit order and stuff like that, that, that makes it a little iffy. But, you know, if you're having problems and, it, and it's all within the first five to 15 minutes, just know these guys, this platform is just not designed for momentum based day trading. It's not. You want to go with somebody who's who caters to that. Um, and they'll tell you. And how do I know? Uh, let me show you this. I have, if you have an office in your hometown, um, you can set up, they have hands-on training. They have live training classes that you can actually go to. If you have issues, you can actually go to the office and there are people there that can help you right then. And this is an email I got this morning where I have um, a seminar coming up on Thursday at 12 o'clock at my lunchtime. That's when I typically go to these things. And any problems I have, any issues I have, I get handled right there. Or they teach me anything I need to be taught, they teach me. And they said, the platform, they've told me, the platform is not meant to trade like a lot of these um, quick momentum based day traders, you know, that's it kind of developed into that, you know, day trading kind of developed into that. That's hot. People like doing that, the penny stocks and all of that said this just was not designed for that use, but people use it. And for a while they were able to, um, you know, make it work for them, but now it's you're gonna have issues. You're gonna have issues, and all I can say is, if it's to the point where you feel you can't trade, and there's nothing that you can do to work around it or to work with it, then you got to move on and find something else. It's your responsibility to make sure you have the tools that work for you. And if this one suddenly doesn't work anymore, you got to drop it like a bad habit and move on. So that's my two cents on it. All right. So today, like I said, today was kind of a carbon copy of yesterday. Um, we got win. The only difference is I traded it to the long side yesterday. Today we cut, we caught it short. Um, you know, here's a five minute opening range low, but I had to get it below this. And then, oh man, I, this isn't the right chart, but this isn't the one that's marked. And then there was the 200 from the daily chart. So I didn't take it up here. I waited for it to get through that before I could take it short. And we just got a base hit. We got a base hit. And this thing came on back up. And ended up stopping us out break even. Almost identical to yesterday. We got the first, but it was to the long side. We got the first hit. Pull back. Stopped us out. We're done for the day. And you can see, I wasn't. Even though it traded through all of this, I'm not going to buy it into all of this resistance. And yeah, it traded through this pretty good. But as a rule, I don't because oftentimes it ends up doing something like this where you don't get any follow through. It pulls all the way back and you may end up stopping you out and you try it again. It just keeps doing it again and again. So I don't even worry about it. 
and I'm not even upset that I missed this because I know I wouldn't have traded this. I would not have bought and held it going through all of this. That's just not the type of trader I am. Um, and so you can see what it did the rest of the day. It didn't really do much after that. Um, so we ended up again with $205 and five cents. Uh, I think I made, we made $200 right at $200 yesterday. So almost like a carbon copy, same stock. We just traded it short today, almost the same results. All right, so the other stock, now XLRN, this is the one that if you were in chat late yesterday, you saw what we did We did with this. You know, it gapped up, we waited till it hit 100 after market yesterday and shorted it then, and then we brought 50 shares over. I only went 100 shares because the spread was two dollars at some point and when i got in my entry was 96. i was trying to get in at 97.50 but the spread was so bad i just i couldn't get it in and i'm sure i was down maybe 150 to 175 dollars as soon as i got in the trade you know that's how bad the spread was but I had really good conviction that the reversal was in and we were coming back. And you can see today, big indecision candle. So guess what? I'll be watching it again tomorrow. Um, Cause right now it's a big indecision candle. I still have um, 25 shares left, but you'll see, this is what happened yesterday. Now I wasn't going to chase this. Now, had it had this candle pulled back about down to the nine and the VWAP and stuff and, and started to bounce off, then I would have jumped in long and rode it because it would have given me the pullback and I could buy out support. I wasn't chasing it up here, even though it would have been really lucrative. I wasn't chasing it. The only thing I, I kind of focused in on was if it hit 100, I'm going to be looking to short it. It put in the, the reversal setup and I got it. So again, only took a hundred shares here yesterday, but we got half. Uh, we locked in $320 yesterday. And so today uh, we woke up to a gap now and it just kept working its way down. And I had a target of 75 um, got filled at 74.88, really nice, about 12 cents to the good. Um, but it did not hit my final target, which was the 200. And you can see the 200 just kept pushing up. And this told us that we just, you know, we just have too much support here. So it's going to have to work itself back through the support tomorrow if we're going to get, you know, another leg down. But again, if you look at the daily chart, this is a big indecision candle. It's set for another pretty big move tomorrow, either to the long or to the short side. And, you know, that's what I'm going to be paying attention to here. All right. So today we locked in 5.2610. So we, we're over 800 bucks so far. Got 25 shares left. We'll see if we can get a bigger sell-off tomorrow. And, you know, lock in the rest of this this uh, this profit here. I really wish Boeing would sell the hell off. I really wish they would let it go. Um, but I got a, a little bit worse average now because I added back when it popped. And it, they just keep holding it. They keep holding it. I'm going to take some more off if it hits 300 again. I mean, I'm under 310 again. What's it, 309.50 or so is the level. So I'll take more off if it hits that and looking for it to go through 300 for the rest. But just wish it would hurry the hell up. Um, 
for our swing trades, the two we had on our watch list um, Sunday, today, like we said, we were going to wait for earnings to to be announced. This one had earnings today or yesterday after the close. So we needed to wait. And if you followed the plan, you picked up about six points today. Or five points at least. Um, should Probably shouldn't have taken profit yet. I'd be looking for around 160 to, to lighten up and then look for that move up to the 52 week high or the move through it. But you're in a pretty good window here. Now, yeah, you could probably get in tomorrow. You'd be chasing a little bit. Your risk, you may not be able to manage your risk properly. You know, you would have to use a max loss stop. You couldn't use, you probably wouldn't want to use the low here. Because honestly, it's just, it's one of those where you either have to go in small size and give it the room it needs or take a little bit more risk, size up, give it a max loss stop and hope that you don't get stopped out. But this did give a really good move today. Um, and we'll look to see what it does tomorrow, but really good start for this 20 cross. And, you know, our goal is a 52 week high. So really nice room there. Um, the other stop VIAC, this one did trigger today. Unfortunately, it, this was triggering a little early. I was looking for this to sell through some more down to around 30 to give me enough room to trade this, this is not enough room for me. Um, I would have to take a thousand shares and try to get two and a half points. And that's not what I want to do on these. So this one did not really set up the way I wanted it to, even though it triggered today, I was looking for some more selling down closer to 30. But remember we were talking about that on Sunday, how we, we wanted to see this sell off some more. Um, sell through the 52 week low and give us enough room so that we can make profit. And that's why I was watching this, but this it just didn't happen. All right, so that's going to do it for today as we'll be back at it tomorrow. And I don't have time. I was going to talk about the earnings emails that I sent out, um, but I'll try to talk about them tomorrow. I, I'm trying not to go over my limit in time. I'm already over. But we'll talk about them tomorrow. Hopefully I won't have too much to run my mouth about. So you guys have a great night and I will catch you in the morning.